This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. If there's one thing most of us guitarists don't know, it's how to talk to a woman. Uh, no, right, it's, I think EQ, um, for me personally, I think it's because you have like numbers from like 50 hertz to 15 kilohertz. Like they don't really seem to mean much to me because it seems like there's a lot of stuff focused between sort of, I don't know, 500 hertz and two kilohertz like that's where a lot of stuff seems to happen and that seems to be all right mostly at down this side of the eq and then there's like a bunch at this other side of the eq so i wanted to do a video kind of exploring that with the help of this neural dsp blog which i saw yesterday which i think is actually super helpful so thank you for that from neural dsp also there's a little thing from empress but if you've ever wondered you know what does it mean to have a warmer tone um so you know empress and neural dsp probably talk about sort of 150 hertz, 250 hertz, this kind of region as being where you might find more warmth um, and that sort of stuff. If you've ever wondered, you know, muddy tone, where's that where things could get a little bit muddy, maybe 250 to 500 hertz, that sort of region. If you're going to make changes to, to mud and focus, maybe that might be the area in terms of clarity things like that maybe a thousand hertz maybe two thousand hertz sparkle words like that maybe a bit higher than that maybe four thousand um and then kind of things like air and all that sort of stuff and maybe even fizz um sort of between four thousand and eight thousand might be where you might find those kind of frequencies that sound a bit digital a bit like fizz or you know also those areas where you might want a bit more definition and sparkle as well so that's what this video is going to be about and what i'm going to do is use the neural dsp graphic eq to kind of show some of that stuff i hope it's kind of somewhat interesting to you as it is for me because as i say eq in general is not something that i can sit and connect with and oftentimes it's been that i just sort of play around with it and see what it does um and maybe through doing this sort of thing i can actually have a bit more of an understanding about why I'm doing what I'm doing and what I'm actually changing. You know, maybe now 500 hertz might mean something to me. Um, 2000 hertz might mean something else. Do you know what I mean? 
on with the video. I thought this was actually a really, really super helpful article. I was just reading it. And I thought, what if we, I've got uh, Helix Native here with kind of Solgano sort of stuff. And I thought we could use the Neural DSP uh, EQ here to sort of talk about what they're saying. <laughs> Uh, I'm using a, a high gain tone because that gives us kind of the most information across the EQ spectrum kind of as it is. So get an idea here of where each note is. So 77 hertz for our E, 103 hertz for our A, D 138 hertz, G 185, B 233 and E 311. So all of that is basically below 500 hertz. What we're actually interested in a lot of the time with kind of guitar tone is uh, overtones and harmonics and stuff like that, right? So low frequencies from 20 hertz to 250 hertz. So this section here, uh, mid range from 250 to 4 kilohertz. This is actually where we need to be most careful. And then high frequencies from 4K to 16 kilohertz. Oh, while each genre, guitar rig, song, and even guitarist may require different EQ setups, certain moves serve as a good starting point for shaping your tone. For the low frequencies, it's usually beneficial to cut anything below 70 hertz. This helps reduce muddiness and unwanted low end rumble, especially when excessive bass frequencies clash with the other instruments in the mix. So what we could sort of do to show what those tones actually are, what those frequencies are. Kind of here, there's not actually much information around there. So this is something I was thinking about the other day. And here, there's a lot at 125. So hopefully what you could hear there is that actually there's some controls there, maybe sort of 250 to four kilohertz where you're hearing the majority of the sound. That's where the majority of our kind of guitar tone actually resides. And then this stuff here It's kind of just the stuff around the edges and a 125 hertz. So that is essentially, you know, the, the parts of our tone which are kind of like more feel, more about feel than anything else. So that's the first time really that I've tried that as a, as a technique, just to, in terms of understanding what actually does what. So what that tells me essentially is that things below 125, 150 Hertz, I can afford to make more drastic changes because you know, even making like a plus 15 DB change here doesn't massively alter the tone. And likewise, sort of above eight kilohertz, you can afford to do fairly drastic looking things. And it doesn't necessarily make a huge difference because there's not actually as much kind of content here anyway. Whereas if I make aggressive changes, in the between 250 and four kilohertz, that's where you actually start to get pretty aggressive sounding things. So I think as a rule of thumb, somewhere like between 250 to four kilohertz, if you're changing like beyond three dB, 
you might consider making a change elsewhere because our EQ can be really powerful. Um, but if we're having the shape on the EQ, you know, to that degree, maybe something else in our chain would be, we might be better off starting there. So like up to three dB changes. can be really beneficial so they said basically cut the 65 kind of stuff below they also said that boosting around 80 hertz can enhance the depth and warmth of your tone um here we yeah So I kind of think about 125 to 150 is kind of your feel type stuff. The mids contain the primary information of the notes produced by guitar, so it's where the leading tone will come from. Boosting around 800 hertz will increase clarity. So, you know, between around 1,000 is where we're talking here, really, isn't it? Because we don't have an 800, but... So around one kilohertz, we may be thinking of clarity. These frequencies between 500 hertz and one kilohertz can make you sound a bit boxy, a bit tube screamer-ish. I'd say the 500 hertz is probably the most important control on this particular EQ. Um, okay, boosting the high frequencies will add sparkle and brightness to your tone. A boost at around five kilohertz can enhance articulation and presence without sounding too harsh. This is like four kilohertz. or that could be a good way to reduce harshness. Okay, uh, cheat sheet, enhance the warmth by boosting around 80 hertz, plus two to plus four. A subtle boost at 800 hertz to enrich the tone. We don't have 800. Introduce a bit of sparkle around six kilohertz. I think also, yeah, four kilohertz, two kilohertz, we can increase the kind of upper. stuff around there but that was for specifically for a jazz tone um, but you know those things are basically true across the board right around our lower end sort of 80 hertz to 150 hertz is where we can, can kind of add a bit of warmth um, enriching the tone I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that but what we're doing if we were boosting at kilohertz is kind of adding a little bit more in the mid region um, introduce a bit of sparkle around six kilohertz okay Classic rock distortion, add depth to your sound with a light boost at 100 hertz. So, this is kind of that feel aspect. You know, basically giving you more of that feeling of being somewhat in a room with a cab this low end stuff can help that but be careful with it because it can start to really get a bit overpowering especially if you boost that too much reduce some of the muddiness by cutting slightly around 400 hertz so around so 
So if we're thinking about mud, maybe we're kind of now thinking about 500 hertz as being around that kind of mud region. 400 to 500 hertz. Edginess and bite, okay, two to four thousand kilohertz. Here we're saying three, three kilohertz, so right in the middle of that, these two sliders. This is kind of our bite. <laughs> Yeah, so if you're thinking I need a bit more bite, a bit more clarity, a little boost around two kilohertz, four kilohertz could be a good thing, right? Robust low end, moderately boost between 80 hertz and 100 hertz. Clear out muddiness and focus the sound by cutting in the 250 to 500 hertz range. So yeah, that makes sense. Increase the aggressiveness in rhythm parts with a boost around three kilohertz. So again, between. Yeah, sort of just increasing the clarity a little bit. For lead sections, enhance sharpness and clarity with a substantial boost at five kilohertz, so around four. Now, I wouldn't actually prescribe to do that, but I'll talk about instead of that, what we could do. So I think that's a really, really good starting point. Uh, I can also remember Empress EQ which gave a really, really good uh, words for the same thing can help us to, to, to basically get what people mean. So frequency region descriptions, uh, 80 to 150 hertz boosting can add a subtle warmth and bigness to the sound. Cutting can bring down any rumble you're experiencing. So rumble, warmth, we're kind of thinking about 80 to 150 hertz. 150 hertz to 400 hertz. Cutting in this region can remove a bit of mud and boosting will bring out the warmth. Okay, so we're still talking about warm stuff and also mud around here. 400 to 800, cutting in this region can make the sound more pristine. Boosting will add an aggressive edge to the sound. 800 to 2 kilohertz, boosting in this region will bring out the twang in your sound. Cutting will create a rounder, less aggressive tone. And above 3 kilohertz, boosting in this region can add brightness and sheen. Cutting in this region can minimize noise and reduce harshness. And this is the, the most useful part of the uh, Neural DSP EQs, I think, that are kind of new-ish. Uh, the low pass filter and the high pass filter, where instead of worrying about this stuff in the middle, as I showed you, you might want to be a bit more careful with, with this stuff, but the very low end and the very high end, we can actually use shelving to... start to gradually cut off the, the more cut off the stuff that is um, you know kind of offending maybe the, the stuff that makes it sound a bit more digital And you could even pair that with kind of boosting these regions that we were talking about here that can add that extra clarity as well as using the high-end roller.
But that, I thought, was a really good article for me personally because it, EQ is not something at all that comes natural to me. Um, this is my favourite actual control in any modeler for, for EQ and stuff because um, I just find actually instead of going in and making these micro changes to you know specific frequency regions um, which can start to, to make you know things sound maybe a bit like you've got like a cocked wah You know, in, in many cases, what I prefer to do is just to leave the main EQ flat and just bring this in until... The top end is tamed to where I'm liking and similarly with the low pass or high pass filter, sorry. If you're finding things super rumbly that's also a really great tool on that side of the EQ rather than going into sliders um, so yeah I hope that's somewhat you know for me I, I find it useful to kind of remind myself about what folks are using you know when we talk about the sounds of an electric guitar what, what do people really mean um, and trying to, to get as many words for the different bits and pieces you know I think is a, a really good idea so um yeah if you want to leave your favorite words for guitar tones and things that mean stuff to you in the comments feel free to do so if you've got eq tips for folks as well um but i thought that was a, a really good article from neural dsp which kind of prompted me to think yeah let's just do a video on this because i think it's worth re-looking at some of this stuff i'll catch you in another video soon cheers for stopping by i was using the soldano ripper preset here as the kind of base layer for this stuff um and you can jump into the Gumroad folder if you want to check that out. And probably techniques I'm using here, EQ-wise, I've got 8 kilohertz high cut on one of the cabs. And also boosting in the low frequency regions, 149 hertz by 10.5 dB. As I showed you, there isn't crazy amounts of information in the low end in general. So you can go a little bit wild um, with that sort of thing. You want to be careful doing a boost that size anywhere above kind of 250 up to two kilohertz because you're going to get silly things happening. It's going to sound odd. Cheers for stopping by.